Humble brag time. Our top eight at SCG Con Philly with the Epic Storm featuring some spicy changes. Let's go check those out. About two weeks ago, I published three Epic Storm videos in a row. And well, let me tell you, the reception was decent. People seem to really enjoy it. However, the view counts, not so great. I don't know if I'll be doing that again, but the silver lining is I got tons of playtesting in for SCG Con Philadelphia, and well, I absolutely crushed that event. Really happy with my performance there, and I learned a lot grinding leagues up until that event, and one of the things that I learned was that I needed to change my surveil lands. So I'm no longer playing Thundering Falls. I am still playing a single copy of Undercity Sewers, but our secondary surveil land is actually commercial district. This is because we wanted two untapped blue sources for all of our cantrips. We have Volcanic Island and Underground Sea to cast Ponder and Brainstorm, and only one untapped blue source was a problem. So instead of playing Taiga, we're playing the Commercial District, and I think that this is the best secondary land that we've played with Surveil so far. And I've really been enjoying the Commercial District. So one of the reasons why I think that it should be Taiga we're really not playing that many red cards anymore. We do have Burning Wish and Galvanic Relay, Song of Creation, but red mana is really only used on the combo turn these days, and that makes a Surveil Land a pretty good target for th being your second of a color because it's not really a color you need untapped that often. So I like that. And then green also really only used on the combo turn unless you're defensively using a Veil of Summer. So the commercial district is likely better than Taiga. So that was the first change. And in my last video, you would see that I was on triple Echo of Aeons plus two Surveil Lands. I've actually loved that innovation so much that it's bred more innovation. At one point we were trying out Defense Grid and then we played a spicy, spicy list featuring Force of Will. I didn't record it, but I definitely played like four or five leagues with it before I ended up shelving that list. And it was interesting, I'll say that. It was really good against other combo decks. The problem was you couldn't really protect your Lion's Eye Diamond plus Echo Veyons or Burning Wish plus Lion's Eye Diamond lines. So ultimately, I ended up going back to Thoughtseize. And Thoughtseize was nice because you could discard your own Echo of Aeons and then, you know, flash it back, that sort of thing. But I found that I was actually a little bit light on action. So in our deck with Burning Wish and Beseech the Mirror, Aqua of Aeons, etc., I had a number of draw sevens that just never hit anything. So I was looking for a way to solve that. And I decided that instead of playing four copies of Galvanic Relay in the sideboard, I would shove those Galvanic Relays back in the main deck. And in, instead of, you know, forcing through a Beseech the Mirror, we would just overrun our opponents using Beseech the Mirror, Galvanic Relay, and Echo of Aeons. One of the nice things that Echo of Aeons does is it allows you to rebuild extremely quickly, or you're allowed to mulligan aggressively. And now with the current configuration of the Epic Storm, if you're facing a non-blue deck, you can mulligan for a fast Echo of Aeons with Lion's Eye Diamond, or Beseech the Mirror, which is pretty good in every matchup. Combo, Control, Aggro, Prison, Beseech the Mirror is just great in all of them. But against blue decks, Galvanic Relay is your best card. So if you know you're facing a blue deck, you can prioritize Galvanic Relay. And if you're facing a non-blue deck, you can prioritize Echo of Aeons. And this gives the deck a lot of flexibility, but also play depending on the matchup. If you know what you're facing going in, I think that you're a pretty big favorite. So I like that about this current list. And the Echoes have been more consistent due to the higher threat density. I still wanted Thought Seizes, so those ended up moving to the sideboard. And you can bring those in to beat Mind Break Traps or Endurance or Force of Vigor, whatever you're trying to beat. But the cards that we care about with Thought Seize usually come out of the sideboard. So I don't mind the fact that they're not in the main deck anymore because, I mean, yeah, you can hit a counter spell, but the things we really want to hit with Thought Seize come out of the sideboard. So that's my thought process there. Two Beseju, Two Echo and Truth has been pretty stock at this point, and then the Consign to Oblivion. A change that is going to make people a little bit upset in probably two different ways. We're playing a cyborg copy of Beseech the Mirror. So the first reason somebody's going to be upset about this is that when Beseech the Mirror was first printed, I said, no, Beseech the Mirror is so good, you want all four copies in the main deck, and I was very adamant about that. And I still think Pass Bryant was correct. All right, I'm a hypocrite, I'm playing it now. That's not exactly 
how you should think about this in my opinion. So what changed is that we're playing Echo Veons in our deck in addition to Galvanic Relay. So previously, those, like if you look at the list that I top eight at Eternal Weekend with, I was not playing Echo Veons in the main deck. And that was really made possible by the surveillance that did not exist until about a month ago. So with the addition of surveillance, we've increased our action. And if we're increasing our action this much, we can afford to put a Beseech in the Mirror in the sideboard for our Burning Wish. Okay, so I hope you're following me so far. Increased threat density. Your threat density is so high, you can actually afford to move one of your better pieces to the sideboard. That makes sense to me. So the other thing that's going to make people mad is that I cut Peer into the Abyss. I was originally playing both Beseech of the Mirror and Peer into the Abyss. But once I put a Beseech into the sideboard, I noticed that I wasn't really going for Peer into the Abyss anymore. There was like maybe one in 75 matches where Peer was better than Beseech the Mirror. And I, I don't want to play a, a sideboard slot for a really small percentage. I need all of my sideboard slots to carry a lot of weight. So that is why I ended up cutting Peer into the Abyss. And now we're just playing a Beseech of the Mirror there. So those are all of the changes. I've already wasted a bunch of time in the beginning of this video. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is already upset at me because, well, you people don't watch the deck text and then it hurts me. So I'm just going to head on into match number one. I appreciate you that do watch and I'll see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsworm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Match number one. We're on the play and we're facing bacon, lettuce, tomato, and we've opened up a turn one win, which is sweet. Okay. I like that. What our opponent's goldfish history says is they play a lot of blue decks. So if we fizzle here, we're, you know, in a lot of trouble. I think I'm going to keep it anyway. And uh, we're just going to take the chance that our opponent doesn't have a opening hand force of will. Okay, match one, game one, we're going for the turn one win. Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual. Let's try a Lion's Eye Diamond. That resolved, Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm sorry, Dark Ritual. And then we'll play another copy of Lion's Eye Diamond. Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Lion's Eye Diamond. Storm six. The opponent making me sweat here. Well, that resolved, okay. We will select Guys while holding priority. I had three red. Guy's will on the stack. And now the force of will. Exiling a thought scour. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue to play this game because I want to know what my opponent is doing. I mean, I probably lost this game with a force of will regardless. So, like, I could have kept an Lion's Eye Diamond in play. I didn't need to sacrifice for red. But if they, for some reason, countered Beseech on the back end, having relay would have mattered. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to just keep the Lions Eye Diamond in play and hope to draw an Echo of Aeons. But now I need to figure out what our opponent's doing where they're playing Thought Scour in their deck. They play a Consider. Milling over a Hooting Mandrills. Okay, so they're probably on like a Rug Delver style deck. Brainstorm. Okay. Misty Rainforest. Ponder. I'm good to pick it up from here. I don't need to play out the rest of this. We had a turn one win. Our opponent had Force of Will. But now we can go to the post board games, and uh, my my deck is very small because I was recording Vintage uh, just yesterday, so I'm going to scale everything up just a, a smidgen. And we'll bring in Beseju Who Endures, Cyborg Out Cabal Ritual. You might be thinking your opponent plays blue, why aren't you boarding in Thoughtseize? That's not really what these matchups are about. I think my main deck is actually pretty ideal. The only thing that I want to do is make my mana a little bit more stable against the Wasteland deck that could also be playing Stifle and definitely plays Days. Game number two, we are on the play. This hand seems fine. I'll try it. Keep. All right. Game number two, having some friendly banter with our opponent in chat. All right. Lotus Petal. Well, a Chrome Mox. We'll imprint the additional copy of Beseech the Mirror. Play out a Mox Opal. And we'll ponder. We don't need any of these. We will shuffle. 
And Dark Ritual is one of our best draws here. So next turn, ideally, I would find a mana source, and then I have Beseech the Mirror with Veil of Summer backup. They play Scalding Tarn. We found that mana source. All right, let's attempt a Veil of Summer here. And we can play through days. I mean, I could have had Veil of Summer into Beseech the Mirror not through days last turn, but we want to beat days. That's the big thing here. They Force Will, Exile, and Consider. Okay. Let's attempt a Dark Ritual. That resolved, and now we will Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing a Mox Opal. That resolves. So my concern right now is a Surgical Extraction. So I could get Song of Creation, but we'd have to pass the turn. If they have a Pyroblast, obviously that's a little awkward. Um, I could Galvanic Relay for five, but, I mean, that just puts us at parity. I mean, Guy's Will just wins the game. I think I'm just going to go for the Guy's Will here. Hold priority on the Guy's Will. And I'll sacrifice the Lotus Petal for a black. And they have Fairy Macabre out of their Delver strategy. That's a weird one. Okay. Sure. That is a very odd card to have, but it's going to beat me here. Okay, so we'll play the Mox Opal. And I can't even ponder into Galvanic Relay. I was like, if they have Surgical... I could theoretically ponder into Galvanic Relay, Dark Ritual Relay. That's not an option here. But we did find LED Echo, which was insane. So I'll keep the LED. We'll play Diamond. And now I'm going to Veil of Summer. Oh, no, I... Okay, this isn't going to work. Uh, because I have resolved Guy as well. So I just have to pass the turn. I mean, I guess I could... It just gives me a card deep, and I think the card underneath was Brainstorm, so I believe that this is actually just the right move. And now we'll pass. They have a Wasteland, sure. Tropical Island. Up the Beanstalk. So they're not a Delver strategy, they are a Beanstalk deck, that's what the Hooting Mandrills was for. They have three cards in hand. Let's try the Brainstorm here. Another Echo, okay. So this is an interesting spot. If they have another force, it's better to discard both echoes here because I could echo in back-to-back -back turns, but I lose the guaranteed land. But if I get forced here and then they waste me, I can't flashback echo next turn anyway. So I think I'm supposed to just flashback the echo. We'll add three blue. Spin the wheel. It's from two. They have days. I will pay. All right, so we have Lotus Petal into a Galvanic Relay. Big fan of that. Lion's Eye Diamond. So they're not a Delver deck. That's important to keep in mind. Like, we did see Thought Scour consider Hooting Mandrills Days and Wasteland, but they're not actually a Delver strategy. They're just a dedicated Delve up the Beanstalk deck. I've already played a land, so we have to pass the turn from here. The last six cards are what I'm able to play. So Misty Rainforest, Brainstorm, Burning Wish, Misty, and Lotus Petal. The opponent plays Flooded Strand and passes. Okay. Or just moving to their second main phase. They destroy my Bayou. We draw another copy of Veil of Summer. Love it when we uh, hit the good cards. Play Lotus Petal. So it's important to remember here, I don't have an untapped green source or Veil of Summer if off of a Misty. I'm going to start by playing Besaju as my land for turn. And then we'll attempt a Veil of Summer here. Storm 2. They fetch in response. They've selected a Tropical Island. And Brainstorm. Veil of Summer on the stack. They Daze. I'll pay for Daze. Veil of Summer again. We draw a Lotus Petal, so I appreciate the Storm. Let's... Hmm... Brainstorm from hand. You could Veil of Summer just the cantrip, but I, I'm not convinced that the mana is worthwhile. And we find another Beseech the Mirror. That can go back on top of the deck. And now I will hold priority on Ponder. Storm is seven, and I'll add three black with this Lion's Eye Diamond. Ponder. If they have a Surgical Extraction here, it could shuffle the deck so that way I, I don't find Beseech the Mirror. And they have another Fairy Macabre. Don't care. Sure. Ponder. We will keep the Beseech. Sacrifice a Lotus Petal. Bargain away the Mox Opal. Storm 8. And we'll grab Tendrils of Agony. 
cast it targeting you for 18 life. All right, so now I have a better idea of what our opponent's playing, and I don't uh, need to be guessing as much going into game number three. Yeah, let's just re-cement. I still don't want the Thought Seizes. We're on the draw, and I've opened up a weird hand. I can't actually cast anything in my hand. I'm not convinced that this is a good keep. They've taken a mulligan. Yeah, I believe I'm supposed to as well. And this is significantly better. We're definitely keeping this. Keep and we'll put Equivaeons on the bottom. Turn one, Wasteland Pass. Okay. I guess I'll play the Undercity Sewers here. Like, it's always going to come into play tapped and get wasted, so I think that this is fine. And we naturally surveil away an Echo, just as Kronos drew it up. The God of Storms. And stuff, they cycle a Lurian Revealed. And they find a Hedge Maze. They play the Hedge Maze and Surveil 1. I love all of these Surveil lands. I think that they're amazing. They kept the top card. They destroy my Undercity Sewers. Sure. We draw Burning Wish. I'm going to play Misty here and pass the turn. They play a Consider, so another Surveil. Gets rid of a Misty Rainforest. And plays a Wasteland. I'm going to sit on this Brainstorm in my hand. I don't need to Brainstorm into a Wasteland here. We can just pass the turn. Okay, looks like we're on a holding pattern. Veil of Summer, we'll play out the Lotus Petal. Send it back. Okay, it looks like our opponent's also missing land drops. We're just going to, you know, play this game. We draw Brainstorm number three. I think I am supposed to just pass here. Like, having three Brainstorms in my hand doesn't help me. So I'm just going to discard one. They cycle a Lorian Revealed. Picks up a Tropical Island. I have a feeling that our opponent might be holding open a Veil of Summer. Okay, they're just... They paused on their second main phase, but they decided to pass. I'm going to go to cleanup again. Discard another Brainstorm. They Fairy Macabre my Brainstorm and Echo of Aeons. That's fine. Another Beseech the Mirror. I mean, I've drawn really terribly, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't like to complain too much in my videos, but our draw steps have uh, not been very generous to us. They have land number four. Are they just straight blue-green? What's going on? Another Beseech. We only have three in the main deck. What are you doing to me? Okay. They play an Up the Beanstalk, tapping Wasteland. All right, so they have eight cards. I think I'm going to attempt an end step Brainstorm here. It is if my Misty Rainforest even resolves or if they're a crazy Stifle Gamer. And it does look like they are an insane person that plays Stifle. Okay. We drew another land. Let's attempt to fetch again. And it looks like we're met with another Stifle. Sure. Pass the turn. They play a Brainstorm. Scalding Tarn. They have six cards in hand. Lion's Eye Diamond. Doesn't help me much right here. I think I just need to go to clean up. Discard Burning Wish. They play Brainstorm. All right, still no threat from the opponent. We find Dark Ritual number three. I'm going to just pass the turn here and discard Brainstorm. Mystic Sanctuary, okay. They get back a copy of Brainstorm. They cast it. They play Polluted Delta. And they still have seven cards in their hand here. Come on, Doc. Our deck is mostly mana. <laughs> uh, I think we just have to go to cleanup again. They play another Brainstorm. Scalding Tarn is their land for the turn. We draw another Burning Wish. We will pass. So we've seen 33% of our deck at this point in three lands. Discard a Burning Wish. Our opponent is going to hard cast a Lurian Revealed. They draw four cards, one additional due to the Up the Beanstalk. And another copy of Up the Beanstalk. They have 10 cards in their hand here. They discard Misdirection and Force of Will. Their hand must be stacked. All right, so we draw Misty. We'll attempt to fetch again. That actually resolves. Grab Underground Sea. I mean, I could have grabbed a Bayou. We do have a Veil of Summer in our hand, but there's a Wasteland on the battlefield. Attempt a Dark Ritual. Attempt another Dark Ritual. Attempt another Dark Ritual. So this should put us up to 7 mana. And now I will Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Lion's Eye Diamond. My hope here 
is that our opponent, after using two stifles, doesn't have another stifle for Galvanic Relay. In the previous games, they've let Beseech Resolve. If they let Beseech Resolve, I'm probably just grabbing a Galvanic Relay. Okay, and they did let it resolve. We'll cast it. Relay for six. This is the punish for letting Beseech the Mirror resolve. Do you, this, so they didn't have a Fluster Storm, no Stifle, nothing. There's another Beseech in there. And an Echo. Well, Galvanic Relay again. So next turn we should be working with 13 cards. So the question is, are, is our 13 cards good enough to beat their seven cards sculpted over an entire game plus double up the Beanstalk? Probably not, but we're going to try. And a lot of lands in those 13 cards, which makes sense considering I didn't draw lands most of this game. And they're going to clean up. Are you going to waste me in my upkeep? No. Okay. We'll play Bayou. Let's start with the Mox Opal. Play a Chrome Mox. We're not going to do anything fancy here. We'll play another Chrome Mox. And now we will attempt a Veil of Summer. There looks like they're going to hard cast a Force of Will. I'm going to respond to those draw triggers and cast another Veil of Summer. Storm is now six. And they Force of Will exiling Commandeer. Sure. Their deck is just very strange. And now I need one of these two Lines Eye Diamonds to resolve. They have eight cards still in their hand. Okay, so the first Lines Eye Diamond resolves. That's a good sign. Another Chrome Mox. We'll sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond and attempt a Galvanic Relay for 11. Okay, so it looks like that trigger resolved. No Stifle. We reveal both of our Beseech the Mirror targets, Song of Creation and Guy's Will. An Echo of Aeons, Ponder, Veil of Summer, Ponder, Ponder. So we have 12 cards left in our deck. The question is, can we beat double up the Beanstalk with our opponent having 9 cards in hand? A third up the Beanstalk. They have 18 cards. We have two Burning Wishes and a Tendrils of Agony left. A fourth copy of Up the Beanstalk. Okay. They've tapped a blue mana and they're paying costs for a Murktide Regent. There's the win condition. They have 12 cards left in their deck. So unless they have an Endurance, they're actually kind of close to decking. They use a Fairy Macabre. Sure. A fourth, so they have four fairy macabs in their deck. Wild. They wasteland my bayou. And now they have a single green mana open to represent Veil of Summer or Stifle. They discard Thought Scour, Brainstorm, and a fetch land. We draw another copy of Ponder. We can begin by playing Volcanic Island, Lotus Petal. Play out another copy of Lotus Petal. Let's cast a Ponder here from hand. Storm 3. We find Tendrils of Agony. That's good. I'm going to draw the Veil of Summer here. We'll make a green, play Mox Opal. Keep the new one. Cast Veil of Summer from Exile. The Force of Will. That will draw them four cards. I'm going to respond with another Veil of Summer. All right, so it looks like my Veil resolved. They draw four. So now we have to figure out how to beat Stifle and or Veil of Summer. And now this one should draw Tendrils of Agony. Let's attempt a Dark Ritual. I'll ponder. Storm 9. We find Echo of Aeons. Okay. Certainly not bad in this spot. Although I'm pretty sure if I Echo, this Murktide region is going to kill me. And I will play Tundra's Vagony. Storm is 10. Our opponent quickly paying costs here. Stifle number 3. Alright, I have to Echo, I think. Spin the wheel. We're looking for mana off this Echo because we already have some action in our exile that we can play this turn. They daze, but I've already uh, Veil of Summered, so this daze does nothing. Come on, deck, give me a ton of mana here. Galvanic Relay is not going to do it. Or at least I don't think it is. I've played a land. The Murktide Regent is a 21-21, so I definitely cannot pass the turn. So what are my outs here? I just have to like ponder into like the nuts over and over again? I think so. So we'll start on Ponder from 17. Lion's Eye Diamond is actually a huge find here. That was the first card we needed to hit. Okay, so I now have five mana. I can play Song Floating a Blue Ponder, and there's a Chromox on top of the deck. 
Or is it a lotus petal? I can't remember. It might be a lotus petal. Green, red. Play Song of Creation. That resolves. Play Ponder. Song triggers. Okay, we have six minutes to win this game. We'll shuffle this. I have another land I can play this turn, but I don't think I want it to be a surveil land. I'm going to auto yield to this trigger. Beseech the mirror. So that should do it. Play our Besage as our land for turn. Let's cast Dark Ritual. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this now. Dark Ritual again. Holy moly. What a match. Veil of Summer again for just good measure. We drew the Chicken Tenders. Let's play a Mox Opal because I'm allowed to. And Tendrils of Agony. Wow. I think this entire game came down to our opponent not force of willing to beseech the mirror. We somehow got this match. We did not deserve it, but we won it anyway. We are 1-0 in this Legacy League. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play. Wow, I'm still a little excited about that insane match number one. I will keep this. We'll play Misty Rainforest, pass the turn. Our opponent also has a Misty Rainforest, okay. Bloodstained Mire, pass the turn. What are you up to over there, huh? They select Tundra and cast a Brainstorm. All right, so I checked my spreadsheet. I've actually faced this person twice on Cephalid Breakfast. That is not good news for the home team. We'll fetch. Let's grab a commercial district. Brainstorm is... I think it's too slow in this spot. Grab under city sewers. Mox Opal. That can go to the graveyard. I don't think I'm actually allowed to play around them having a Two of Orms chant here, and I think I'm supposed to just jam. Imprint Veil of Summer. Dark Ritual. Let's attempt a Burning Wish. They have Orm's Chant. I mean, I just have to go for the win, but they have it. Dark Ritual. Lota Green. We'll Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Chrome Mox. They Daze. I'll Veil of Summer. They select Tundra. And another Daze. Okay, well, I guess they didn't have it. But I am stopped. They play a Brainstorm with the blue mana they had floating. There's a Nomads. I mean, I, in theory, I could Brainstorm into Lion's Eye Diamond plus Echo of Aeons. It's just very unlikely. I mean, there's one of the two things we wanted here. I think you're actually supposed to shuffle this, though. Yeah, we'll shuffle. Pass the turn. There's a Saga. And the Illusionist. Well, I guess we're going to make our opponent show us their deck. We can see how many orms chant effects they're actually playing. I usually check my spreadsheet for what our opponents are playing after or before a match, but I was queued almost immediately after that first round and I didn't really have time to put it, the data from the first round into my spreadsheet. So I wasted a bunch of time doing that and I should have been looking up what this person was playing. And there's one copy of orms chant. A second copy of orms chant. And that's game number one. All right, so we definitely want Thoughtseize here. What we don't want is Galvanic Relay. It is not ideal in a matchup where your opponent has Orms Chant and could just stop your Galvanic Relay turn. I also think that this match is too fast for Burning Wish into Thoughtseize to really be a line you want to consider. So instead, I'm going to board out a spare copy of Mox Opal, and we'll try this. Game number two. Sure. I mean, it's not amazing, but I'm going to keep it. Underground C and Thoughtseize. Okay. I guess we'll take a copy of Force of Will. Pass the turn. They play Tundra and Nomads. Misty was a great find here. We'll lead on the Ponder before we decide if we want to play the Undercity Sewers or the Misty. We find Diamond. That's good. Oh, I should have I should have stacked the Beseech. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. I'll put the Lotus Petal on top. We can pass the turn. They play Flooded Strand. 
I mean, did you draw Cephalid Illusionist in your two draws? If so, I am dead. Not a lot I could have done about that. I mean, I opened up on Thoughtseize. Stoneforge Mystic. That one is acceptable. Okay. They find a Cauldra Complete. We'll search our deck with Misty Rainforest. Grab Bayou. Let's play Veil of Summer. If we had one more artifact, we'd have a Beseech the Mirror win out of the sideboard. But we don't. So this is just going to be an Echo of Aeons. The Veil of Summer resolves, and now we can spin the wheel with the Echo. All right, Storm 4. Into a protected win. Love that. I mean, we were already protected, but I still, I'm allowed to like it. Discard that Fluster Storm. Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. And then we'll hold control. Create a red mana. We're going to cast Burning Wish, holding priority. Try that again. Magic Online was being a little bit weird. It wasn't letting me pay the costs. Yeah, what is going on here? Okay, sorry. I don't know what exactly is happening, but I'm trying to cast Burning Wish. So I'm holding priority on this Burning Wish. I'm going to pay a black. It's like just not letting me. What is happening? Okay, well, I got it to work, but that was very awkward. And now I will Tendrils. Game number three coming up in just a moment. Our opponent has kept seven, and we've opened up a hand with no protection in it, but plenty of mana. I'm going to keep it. We boarded into eight protection spells. I just have to hope that I'm going to draw one. First turn, Tundra, and pass. Echo was a good draw. We'll play Underground Sea and send it back. There's a Saga, okay. They play in Nomads. Thoughtseize, another diamond, okay. I'm actually not able to, here to play Beseech the Mirror. I am able to play Song of Creation into Days, which isn't really something I want to do, but I think we're supposed to play Song of Creation. Let's see if it resolves. What? The deck with Orm's Chant, Days, Force of Will, Force of Negation, is playing, also, I saw Flusterstorm last game, is playing Mindbreak Trap. That is insane. Why, why do you think you need this? That is nuts. Holy moly. I've seen it all now. Like, hold on. I just want to, this is my data sheet that I use to collect data on myself. Uh, this isn't really used for marketing. It's like literally just for my own purposes. It's like fantasy baseball on myself, right? All right, Cephalid Breakfast, where are you? 25% match win rate. Uh, you do not need Mind Break Trap. I'm just throwing this out there. Like, you are so favored that it is ridiculous. But uh, they want Mind Break Trap, so... ay ay ay. We will flashback Echo. From 7. Okay. I am a mana short of winning here. Play out Chrome Mox. Imprint the guys well. We'll play Mox Opal. I think I need to brainstorm into like a Lion's Eye Diamond. Cabal Ritual Beseech. I mean, that might do it. All right, so I'm going to put the Burning Wish on the bottom, the land on the top. So I guess I can Thought Seize into a potential win here. Target you. Oh my, are we actually going to beat Cephalid Breakfast with Mind Break in their deck? Take the Days. Cabal Ritual. You know, this wouldn't have happened this way if our opponent was just playing, like, a regular Cephalid Breakfast list that didn't hate Storm. I never would have won this. But instead, we are somehow defeating Cephalid Breakfast this league. Holy moly. Two insane matches back-to-back. -back. Wow. All right, 2-0, and oh, three matches left. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round three, we're on the play and we're facing Blue Hen. And I've played them a bunch in the past and, well, they tend to play reanimator decks. So 
if, are they playing the blue list? I don't know, but we do have a pretty well-rounded hand here that's capable of something powerful. I'm going to try this. We'll play Misty Rainforest and pass the turn. Basic Swamp. Unmasked hurting themselves. Exiling Exhum. So they have Galta into Gristlebrand. Wow. That's insane. Okay. They go to five life. We need any card that makes a mana on our turn that we can cast in order to win this game. I am pressured here into grabbing the Bayou and casting Veil of Summer. Land. Land is literally it. That's all we need. Uh-oh. That was not a good draw for us. Chromox, Lotus Petal, Land. It has to be an untapped land. I mean, honestly, I'd take a Lion's Eye Diamond in this spot. Let's see it. No! And they have Lethal on board. We missed our window. Brutal. Okay. We'll bring in some copies of Thoughtseize and take out Galvanic Relay. That was devastating. I mean, I think we made the right choice to just hold open Veil of Summer and pass, but we needed some better draws there. On the play for game number two, our hand has a lot of mana and a Surveil Land, but if we don't hit an Echo or... A black source plus beseech the mirror off the brainstorm this game's probably over i'm going to keep this it's very risky i'm aware of that but in a matchup where you're really trying to turn one your opponent having all this fast mana is just very valuable play lotus petal also like i know for a fact i'm going to receive some comments after that first game being like well this is why you should play tropical island in your deck and trust me tropical island is not that good but we did see the one spot where it's okay all right, well, I think we just found a win. So we'll put back Commercial District, and we have to imprint the Tendrils. I believe it's supposed to be Burning Wish. Play Chromox, imprint the Tendrils of Agony. Dark Ritual. Like, the problem with Tropical Island is, like, you really do need the lands in your deck to make combo-colored mana, and it just doesn't. Storm is 7. Add 3 blue. Beseech the Mirror. We'll grab Guy's Will. Play the Guy's Will. And they went after my diamond instead of the Brainstorm. Please let me punish our opponent here. Pretty please. Brainstorm. Storm 9. No such luck. Ugh. We're Brainstorm Lock too, so this is a very tough spot to be in. Pass the turn. They thought seize themselves. Our kind of cruelty. Play the diamond. We have to pass. They animate dead. They select the Archon. We lose three life. Now we're drawing a Veil of Summer. Our best draw by far is one of our Echo of Aeons, but we have to draw it. That's the big thing here. So we're going to lose eight life. We have three Echoes in our deck. Badlands. Apparently they do something good here. And Tomb. Bristlebrand. Yeah, I mean, they definitely drew something good. Dothy Voidwalker shuts off my Echo out, so I believe we've lost. And I drew Burning Wish that would have been able to get Echo of Aeons. Bummer. Alright, so we are now 2-1. and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match number four, we're on the draw, and I will keep. I've actually faced this person somewhat recently, and they were on Blue Red Delver. Their goldfish history shows a lot of the Grixis Tempo deck that is like a hybrid between Grixis Delver and Rescaminator. It looks like that's what they might be on today. Galvanic Relay is not a bad one. I will fetch. Grab that Bayou. Suspend guys will pass the turn. You might be wondering, why not play out Lotus Petal? You have Veil of Summer. I also have a Galvanic Relay in my hand, and we want that Storm Count. They Wasteland my Bayou. Unfortunate. Guys will lose as a Suspend Counter. Misty will play it. Fetch. Grab Underground Sea, and let's Ponder. Double Burning Wish is pretty stinky. We'll shuffle. Another Relay. Okay. Another Wasteland. Sure. Things looking a little hairy here. How many counters are left on that guy's will? Two. Play Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. 
Let's attempt a Veil of Summer. Force a Negation Exiling Brainstorm. I will pass. And step they brainstorm. Misty Rainforest, okay. Savannah. I guess it's just beans? Sure. They have four cards in their hand. Guys will goes to one counter left. We draw Brainstorm. I think I'm going to attempt to spin the wheel on Echo here. All right. It resolves. Good deal. Okay. So the thing is, we have Guys will coming off Suspend next turn. How can we get the most value out of that as possible? Assuming that it even resolves. Let's begin with a fetch. Grab Underground Sea. We'll ponder. Okay, a diamond. Put Echo on the bottom because then I can surveil it away next turn if uh, I have the opportunity. Play Lotus Petal. Throw Mox. Imprint Cabal Ritual. Play Lion's Eye Diamond. Hold Priority. We will cast Burning Wish. Make three red. Burning Wish Storm six. And they have Force of Will. Bummer. Okay. I was thinking that I could surveil away the Echo next turn after I drew Relay, but that doesn't work if I discard the Commercial District to go all in. Leyline Binding. So they're going to exile my Chromox here. Digging for another counter spell for this guy's will. Wasteland. They destroy my Underground Sea. And Guy's Will will now come off Suspend. If this resolves, there's a good chance I win this game, and if it doesn't, I probably lose. It resolves! We will draw Galvanic Relay. We know the top card of our deck is an Echo of Aeons. Let's... I mean, I could just fetch and ponder. Like, this Relay doesn't even seem that great here. But also, if I fetch and ponder... I don't know what I'm like. I'm short on mana here. So I guess this ponder needs to find mana. Okay, ponder. Interesting. So I could relay here. I take the Chrome Mox, play it, Burning Wish into relay. I think that's probably the line. Yeah, I think that's it. Play Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox will imprint this Galvanic Relay. Sacrifice the diamond for red. Play Burning Wish. Storm 6. Expand my sideboard since it opens up super tiny. Uh, don't love that. And then we'll Galvanic Relay for 7. We know our top two cards are Brainstorm and another copy of Beseech the Mirror. So there's Beseech the Mirror. Brainstorm, Veil of Summer. Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. Veil of Summer. Tendrils, so no black mana. That is actually really light on mana altogether. They play Misty Rainforest. Another Leyline Binding. Ugh, brutal. Exiling my Chrome Mox, making things more difficult here. We'll draw. It's another Dark Ritual. Alright, we're all in on Brainstorm. Our Galvanic Relay for 7 was not good enough. And I don't think this is good enough either. What are we going to do here? So I don't have an untapped blue source for this brainstorm. So if you're thinking like, oh, well, you can fetch and then brainstorm, that's not an option. Um, but what we can do is beseech the mirror for like a lion's eye diamond. But I don't think our storm count is nearly high enough for tendrils of agony. Dark ritual. And not having those chrome mocks in actually matters a lot here. Yeah, I mean, we just lost the beans this game. Beseech... So I can get a diamond, but what are we doing? Tendrils for five? Like, that doesn't, that's not a game-winning line. Yeah, we, we just lost. We were wasted a lot. We had double A line binding happen. A number of forces. Like, our opponent just did their thing. It happens. We'll bring in Besaju, take out Cabal Rituals, try it again. On the play for game number two? Sure. Slow and steady wins the race, right? At least when your opponent's playing a slow control deck. They've elected to keep six cards. We'll play a first turn under city sewers. Bayou can go to the graveyard. You don't like binning your fetchable lands, but I can't afford to draw land number five here. All right, Wasteland is back. Dark Ritual the draw. We'll play Bloodstained Mire past the turn. So we have our commercial district as a fetchable land, and then... Volcanic Island. That's it. So 
keep that in mind that we're already <laughs> at the point where we have access to every land in our deck. We'll fetch, grab the commercial district, surveil. Don't need a chrome mox, that can go to the graveyard. Beseech the mirror. Play Misty, pass. They pick up a Xander's Lounge. Giraffe Digger's Cage. That's going to shut off my Echo of Aeons. We'll fetch on the end step. Grab the Volcanic. Lion's Eye Diamond. So I'm one mana short of Beseech into Galvanic Relay if they counter the Beseech. So I think I'm just going to pass here. They play a Savannah. Okay. Brainstorm. I think I'm going to pass. I can brainstorm another time. And they're just passing. All right, punish me. I'm going to, if you have like a hull breacher or something, you got me. All right, I don't care about bowmasters. That one, that is an acceptable card for you to play here. And we find both Geysville and the Echo. Those two can go on top. We'll play Besage you for turn. Lotus Petal. Cast Dark Ritual. And I think I'm going to take a risk here and ponder, so that way we're not looking at Geysville being exiled to Besiege the Mirror. Storm is three. Another relay. I mean, I could just try to chain relays, or I could shuffle hoping to spike. I feel like the shuffling line is very greedy. But then again, so I take the diamond. It might be fine. This Bowmasters is just going to kill me pretty quickly, so I'm worried about chaining relays. All right, diamond, diamond. So this is a relay for six. Like, I could have looked at Besage you on the Grafdigger's Cage, but when we know that they already have a Bowmasters, like, that just doesn't seem like a winning line to me. Veil of Summer is a good reveal. Ponder, okay. So they have six power in play. They pick up a Tundra. They drop to five cards. They play a land for turn. Four cards remain. They attack for six. I'll drop down to seven life. We draw a land. A land that has no targets. We'll play Mox Opal. Play the Misty. Dark Ritual. I'm going to ponder here. Storm is three. Song of Creation I don't think is a card I'm super interested in. We'll shuffle. We drew another Lotus Petal. So if they have double counterspell here, I lose the game. Play the Lotus Petal. Play Veil of Summer. Have to hope that this resolves. They fetch. So they could have Hardcast Force plus another Force in hand. That would beat me here. Three mana. What are you doing? So this is Force of Negation. Okay, so yeah, I'm dead to another Force here. Besiege Bargaining Away Mox Opal. And they have it. Ah, it's such a bummer. So this league is really weird. Like, I've accepted that I've lost. Um, but... When you look at the data in my spreadsheet, these four color bean decks are actually super good matchups. I'm over 80% against them, but it just seems like both of these games, I was just a card short or a mana short or, you know, I was just not quite there. And then I, I looked at my record against Black Red in the previous round because I just wanted to know where I was. And before the loss, I was at 63%. After the loss, like 61 point some numbers or whatever. But both of these matches are actually favorable. And I just couldn't get the job done, unfortunately. So we're two and two. I could have played better. I also could have made some other decisions. Like I could have shuffled on that ponder, for example, but I didn't. So it might be my own fault because I knew that Galvanic Relay and Geyswell were not going to be fast enough in the face of a big Orcish Bowmasters. So might be my own fault, but we're just going to try to keep our chin up high and win match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alright, the fifth and final match we are on the play. And I wanted to know where I was... I mean, this hand's risky, but I think I'm going to try it. I wanted to know where I was against the four-color or five-color Beanstalk decks percentage-wise. So even after that loss, I am 83% against those decks with a sample size of 23 matches. So not a small sample either. Um, sometimes you do just lose the match at the gathering and you have to accept that. Like, I did lose this round, like or last round, I should say. And that happens, but... 
you know, overall, I'm still feeling very positive about this deck. Like, I could lose this round, and ultimately, a Legacy League isn't that important to me, but this list just feels incredible. And the Echo resolves, we find Tundras of Agony, and all is right in the world. Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Storm is 6, we will Beseech the Mirror, sacrificing Mox Opal. Force of Negation, exiling a Force of Will, we will fetch. So now we know our opponent's playing a blue deck. That's good to know. Veil vale of Summer. Our Veil vale of Summer resolves. Their Force of Negation will fizzle. I'll grab a Dark Ritual. Cast the Dark Ritual. And then for good measure, we'll cycle a Veil vale of Summer. And Tendrils of Agony. That was a sweet one. Okay, so we get game number one. And they're on a blue deck, so we do the standard sideboard practice of just bringing in Besaju. Taking out a couple copies of Cabal Ritual and trying it again. This looks like a fine keep. We'll try it out. First turn, Tundra. Beseech, okay. I mean, Beseech was a good draw. We just need protection now. Search out Underground Sea and let's play a Ponder. Guy's Will is not a card I really want here. I think we're going to shuffle this. Volcanic is fine because it allows me to play Burning Wish for Thoughtseize on turn two. And step the opponent casts a brainstorm. Misty Rainforest for a tropical island. Up the beanstalk. Okay. Another dark ritual. Do I have a win here with Thoughtseize backup? I think I'm short. So we go up to six mana. Burning Wish brings me down to four. Thoughtseize would bring me down to three. Actually, this would work. Alright, let's. Peanut Butter and Jam, Dark Ritual. I got a Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. Storm is 5. The Force of Will, Exiling Brainstorm, okay. Cast Beseech the Mirror, Bargaining Away, Lotus Petal, Storm 7. Beseech the Mirror, Bargaining, Lotus Petal would be Storm 8, Tendrils would be Storm 9. No need to even use the Graveyard here. Okay. This looks like it's going to work. And we beat Beanstalk. So, I mean, a little disappointed that we went 3-2. and two. Like, both the for, the Beans matchup and Reanimator are both positive. I can't believe we actually beat the Commandeer Misdirection Stifle deck. That was also a Beanstalk deck. And then uh, Cephalid Breakfast. So this league was a real roller coaster. We had a lot of highs and lows. I mean, we beat a couple decks we probably shouldn't have beaten. And then we lost the matches that we probably should have won. So it was wild. Hopefully you had some fun watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But I love this deck list. I don't plan on changing anything anytime soon. I could see this being the stock list for a little bit. If I had to look at any slot in the 75 as a like, I don't know how I feel about that sort of thing. It's consigned to Oblivion. It just doesn't come up that often. But... You're a deck that only runs two mountains now, between Commercial District and Volcanic Island. You can't play Pulverize. It's just not realistic. And then, if you're going to want something to answer Chalice of the Void, Archon of Emeria, Deafening Silence, is there really anything better than this card that you can Burning Wish for since it's half a sorcery? So this is a card that I keep on tricking myself into playing. It's just not that useful. So you could not play that slot and then accept that you're going to lose to resolve permanence in game number one or a card you didn't board. Like, because I'm only bringing in Besejus or whatever versus Blue Ducks or something else, this X is a answer if I don't sideboard in answers and then my opponent has something wonky. So it acts as a failsafe there. But it's just, it's an okay card. I just wish that there was something better I could be playing. I guess that's my point here. But I love this deck list. I really do. Hopefully... You know, you have some success with it as well. If you're looking for cyborg guides, we have those in the description down below. You can scroll down and purchase a cyborg guide that way. It's a little bit more expensive, or you can go to the epicstorm.com slash shop. We have cyborg guides available there for $5, or if you subscribe to our Patreon, you get access to the member section of our Discord, the cyborg guides, and other perks. So I would definitely go check out the Patreon, and then the shop, and then, you know, scrolling down if you're just lazy and want it immediately. But that's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, as always, keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. 
And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.